evening. My name is Robert Forstar. I'm, an, I'm a Red Bottom. That's a band of the Assiniboine tribe who that has uh, been put on this reservation. We're, we're right off the reservation. The reservation is across this river north of me. It's uh, 90 miles east to west and probably 40, 45 miles north to south from the river north. Originally, when they, uh, they were going to put us on this uh, reservation, General Curtis talked to the Assiniboines at Fort Peck, and he said, uh, what about all these uh, other Indians here, these uh, people that are camped out there? And our people said, you mean those Yankton-Eye camps out there? There was about 30 of them. And he said, yes, do you want them on our reservation? And, of course, Chief Redstone was uh, one of the chief negotiators. He said, oh, those are our friends. Just leave them. And so that's why, that's where the uh, the Sioux population come in on this reservation. Those are our enemies of our people. They've always been attacking us and chasing us and whatever. And they have a story among themselves that uh, we came from them. Well, to me, in my mind, if, if somebody came from me, I don't attack them and I don't kill their people. That's just uh, the way of our life. But behind us here is uh, the reservation. It's the Fort Peck Indian Reservation. And this river we're standing, we're on the south side of this. It's called the, uh, the, the Europeans call us the Missouri. Why, how they came about that name, I don't know. But this, uh, this river comes from three rivers, three creeks up in, uh, up south of Three Forks, Montana. The Gallatin, the Madison, and I forget what the other one is. I'm, I know the country, but I don't really, didn't spend much time down there. But that's what uh, this, this river comes from. And as this river goes further east, about uh, 07, 80 miles from here, east of us, there's another river comes from the south. It's called the Yellowstone. And together they go on down and they spill into the Mississippi River. And this is, uh, this is the homeland for our people. This is, the river itself is the wintering grounds of the Assiniboine people. We wandered this uh, country all the way south. To, we've got stories of our people having gone down to the... Uh, those painted rocks in the ground, the Grand Canyon. And further on south, the other ancestors of ours, the Hopis and the Mayans, were all, uh, all raised with the stories of the people, who they are. A lot of our ceremonies are the same. And what you're, uh, being an Assiniboine or Red Bottom, we're classified as uh, Plains Indians. And as you go out th throughout this country, you'll see other people that are also called Plains Indians. In other words, the flatlands is what they're talking about. And a lot of our culture, a lot of our ceremonies are basically the same thing. Different languages. And uh, they said, how did they communicate? Sign language. Yes, sometime when you come across a tribe that you've never seen before, the sign language was a great asset to be able to communicate back and forth. But as up here... As we start bunching together and starting residing together, uh, according to the Europeans, we had to all stay on reservations because they didn't want our people scaring the Europeans that were coming in. They have their wild stories over there about who we are. and We all uh, scalp people. We never did that. Maybe once in a while when they, uh, they killed a feared enemy, they would take some of his hair, just a small patch of it, to carry with them and put someplace. Because our Plains people say that when your hair is your spirit, the spirit of, of, of that lives within you is, rep, is represented by the hair on your head. I never ask why, who, because as we grow up, they say, as they talk to you, listen, listen, listen. Don't interrupt when they're talking, especially an old timer. <laughs> 